Hey everyone, in today's lesson I'm going to talk to you guys about the pyrimidine synthesis and metabolism uh, pathway. Um, more specifically, I'm going to talk to you guys about why we need pyrimidines, um, what pyrimidines are, why pyrimidines are important in human health, and I'm also going to tell you guys about some drugs that are used to actually inhibit pyrimidine synthesis during uh, disease states such as cancer. So to begin, um, what are pyrimidines? Well, pyrimidines are six-member nitrogenous bases. Um, so we've got one uh, which is known as cytosine, another uh, known as uracil, and another known as thymine. Now an easy way to remember this is um, the kind of the mnemonic device known as cut the pyramids. So py pyramids um, should help you remember pyrimidine and cut. So C-U-T for cytosine, uracil, and thymine. Now these uh, pyrimidines are very important in RNA and DNA synthesis. Um, in uracil is the equivalent of, or the an analog of thymine in RNA. Now pyrimidine synthesis requires a number of things. One, it requires glutamine. Another, it requires aspartate. And it also requires tetrahydrofolate, um, which is a derivative of folic acid, or otherwise known as vitamin B9. So as you can see here, this is one of the main reasons why we need um, adequate levels of vitamin B9 um, in our diet. So to start off, uh, the cell utilizes glutamine, 2-ATP, and CO2, and combines all of them together and processes them all together by the enzyme carbamol phosphate synthase 2. Now, um, you may remember um, carbamol phosphate synthase 1, or CPS1, in my urea cycle video, um, and this is the uh, CPS2 is actually the cytosolic version of CPS1, and they do very similar things. And the thing they do is they produce carbamol phosphate. Now, in the process, um, in this process, glutamine is actually converted into glutamate. Now, um, you might not have heard of CPS2, but um, you may have heard of CAD. Now, I mentioned CAD in my mTOR signaling video, and I mentioned that P78-6K actually activates CAD. Now, um, and I mentioned that CAD is important in pyrimidine synthesis, and that's what we're talking about here. So this is the actual protein that's very important in, um, in pyrimidine synthesis um, that's regulated through mTOR. Now, this protein, or this enzyme, or enzymatic reaction is also the first committed step in pyrimidine synthesis. Now, this enzyme is actually uh, regulated by inhibition through a UTP, and is actually activated by ATP and PRPP. Um, and as you remember, PRPP is that all-important molecule that I mentioned that's produced in the pentose phosphate pathway. Now, once you've got carbamol phosphate, what happens is it gets converted to carbamol aspartate by the enzyme aspartate transcarbamylase, um, and it actually adds aspartate to um, the carbamol phosphate. In, uh, to produce carbamol aspartate. Once you get the carbamol aspartate, it goes through a couple of steps, um, including uh, through an enzymatic reaction utilizing uh, dihydroorotate dehydrogenase to produce erotic acid. Now, this is the first um, pyrimidine nitrogenous base that's produced. Now, this is not used in DNA synthesis, but it is, it is actually commonly referred to as the first nitrogenous base. Now, this enzyme is important. I wanted to mention dihydroorotate dehydrogenase because it is actually a target of some drugs um, that actually are used in rheumatoid arthritis. And one of them is uh, leflunomide, and that um, actually uh, inhibits this enzyme. Now, once we've got erotic acid, what happens is the cell needs something else. And now, what it does it, is it actually needs. Um, PRPP and what it, how it does that is it goes through again through the pentose phosphate pathway it produces ribose 5-phosphate and through the enzyme PRPP synthase it produces 5-phosphoribosyl 1-pyrophosphate or PRPP and um, the PRPP synthase is actually inhibited by ADP and GDP and is activated by inorganic phosphate. Now when you have PRPP and erotic acid they actually combine to form Erotidine 5 prime monophosphate or OMP. So um, OMP is uh, the kind of the product of the two erotic acid and PRPP being combined together. Now, once you have OMP, what happens is um, it actually gets converted to UMP by the enzyme OMP decarboxylase. Now, this enzyme is also 
inhibited by UMP and CMP. So it's kind of a negative feedback regulation on this enzyme. Then UMP is converted to a UDP, um, and then UDP is um, actually converted to deoxy-UDP or DUDP by ribonucleotide reductase. And UDP can get converted to DUNP, um, which can then can get converted to DTMP. Now this is the critical step that I guys I, I want you guys to remember. Um, thimidylate synthase is the enzyme that converts DUNP to DTMP. So um, this is the all critical step here because this is where a lot of regulation and a lot of um, our drugs in medicine are actually used to target this um, particular enzyme. So thimidylate synthase, guys, remember that, thimidylate synthase. Now, this enzyme actually requires N5, N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate. Um, and I know that's a long name, but really all I want you guys to remember is that it requires tetrahydrofolate or it requires vitamin B9. So this enzyme requires folic acid or vitamin B9. Now, um, this methylene tetrahydrofolate is actually produced by an enzyme known as dihydrofolate reductase. Now, I'll talk to you guys about this in another video, but the main point I want you guys to know from this is that we have very important drugs such as methotrexate and uh, imenopterin that actually inhibit dihydrofolate reductase. Now, methotrexate is an important drug used in, um, as a chemotherapy during um, for various types of cancer. It's also used uh, for... Um, for abortions as well. And this is where it's actually targeting. Um, so methotrexate is an inhibitor of dihydrofolate reductase. So it it's pretty much inhibiting um, folic acid utilization. So thymidylate synthase cannot operate. Now there's also another chemotherapy drug that actually acts directly on thymidylate synthase and that is 5-fluorouracil. Um, and again, this is, uh, as I mentioned before, it's a chemotherapy drug that is used um, in various types of cancer, but the target um, of 5 fluorouracil is actually thymidylate synthase. So um, once we have DTMP, um, it'll be converted to D, uh, DTDP and then to DTTP. Now, um, going all the way back to um, the uh, near the beginning of the pathway, uh, UDP can actually be converted um, in a different um, side reaction to UTP. So it can be converted to UTP instead of uh, DUDP. Now, remember guys, the D stands for deoxy, such as deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA. Um, so instead of DNA, it can also, it can be actually produced into RNA. So that's why this is the side pathway for RNA production. Um, so once you get UTP, it can be processed into CTP via the enzyme CTP synthase um, and utilizing ATP and, and glutamine. Uh, and this enzyme is actually inhibited by CTP, so it's a negative feedback regulation on the enzyme. And these two, UTP and CTP, can actually be used for RNA uh, synthesis. Remember, guys, uracil and cytosine are used for RNA synthesis, and this is where it actually um, is coming from. So... Um, um, once you have CTP, what can happen is it'll be converted to CDP, um, and then it can be processed by the same enzyme as before, ribonucleotide uh, reductase, into DCDP, deoxy CDP. Um, this enzyme I didn't mention before, but it's regulated by a couple of different things. Um, it's inhibited by DATP, and it actually requires a coenzyme known as thyroredoxin. And now DCDP can uh, be converted um, by a couple of steps um, back into uh, DUNP or it can be um, processed into DCTP. And both um, DTTP and DCTP can be utilized for DNA synthesis. So that is the de novo synthesis of primidines. But primidines can actually be reprocessed or resynthesized from old primidines. Um, they can actually be salvaged um, in the cell. Now, what can happen is DNA can, um, any breakdown of DNA can release cytosine or thymine. Um, cytosine can be converted into uracil by deamination process, releasing an NH4+. Um, uracil can likewise come from RNA as well. But once you have these, these products, uh, the, the cell is very smart. It can actually recycle them again um, and... Uh, utilizing a couple of um, a couple of cofactors, one for uracil, uh, uracil requires ribose one phosphate. Thymine requires deoxyribose one phosphate. 
Um, uracil and ribose 1-phosphate can, can convert it into uridine by uridine phosphorylase, and then by, um, by the enzyme nucleoside uh, kinase can be converted into UNP, um, whereas the thymine reaction can be um, the thymine plus uh, deoxyribose 1-phosphate can get converted into thymidine by thymidine phosphorylase, and then into DTMP um, by the enzyme nucleoside kinase. So these uh, UNP and D TMP can be reprocessed and reutilized in the pathway I just showed you guys in the previous slide. And so this is another way the cell can actually recycle and resynthesize and reprocess these um, to utilize them again in the pyrimidine synthesis pathway. So you may be thinking, okay, why do we even need to do de novo synthesis of pyrimidines anyway if they're just going to be salvaged? Well, the problem is that these cofactors, ribose 1-phosphate and deoxyribose 1-phosphate, are um, at very low levels in the cell. So they actually aren't around, they're not abundant. They are not around to be utilized for this salvage pathway, which means the salvage pathway doesn't actually operate at full capacity. It can never operate at full capacity because these cofactors are at low amounts. So we have actually limited salvage of pyrimidines. So that is why we need to actually have de novo pyrimidine synthesis. So anyways guys, that was the um, video on uh, pyrimidine synthesis and metabolism. I hope you guys found it helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.